Crystal Howell is here. Good morning, Crystal. Good morning. Good to see you. Same to you. How you doing? Not feeling like Monday, like, ooh. Uh, how, how you feeling today? I'm being optimistic. Okay. <laughs> I like, optimistic. I like that. Yeah. So let's start there. That is a good place to push off. Um, now, you and I, ha I have a lot of catching up to do. I saw mm -hmm. some of your sessions, but I know that one of the things you want to look back on before we move forward to financial statements, mm -hmm. you want to look at the risk library, yes. uh, which led into loans and things like that. So over to you. Yes. So for persons who may have remembered that was a, a little while back, but it is what led into the entire discussion with loans and everything else. Yes. Because one of the aspects of the risk library that we had discussed was the financial risk. Yes. And part of the risk library would have included strategic, compliance, mm -hmm. operating, reputational risk. And there are a whole slew of them that we can go through, but those are the key ones that we would have pulled out that should be relatable for most small to medium sized businesses. But going into the financial risk, we would have started looking at the different things that could impact a business that are finance related. Okay. Loans being one of them, well, more so interest rates mm -hmm. or changes in interest rates, exchange rates, loss of a significant client, and those kind of things that could impact you. Okay. But to wrap it all up, we wanted to go into financial statements, which I know a lot of persons when they hear financial intimidated and anxious <laughs> extremely intimidated yeah. i was actually helping a friend recently because he started a course with by map and it was interesting to be able to go back to the basics and be able to see what it is that really scares people when they hear mm -hmm. about numbers and accounts and finance and for me it would be everything uh, well yeah. i i haven't convinced him yet but there's nothing to be afraid of okay. when it comes to the numbers the numbers are there to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not trying to make anybody an expert, but I do hope that when you do have these conversations with your financial teams or persons, you're not sitting down there lost. Okay, good. So, so this is really to help us uh, be a little more informed so we can ask the right questions, more of the right questions. Exactly. So we have a better idea of what is going on and, and the jargon is not necessarily exactly. foreign when you hear it. Okay. Yes. So the first thing which I have been preaching, which hopefully everybody by now has in their heads, mm -hmm. is documentation, documentation and writing everything down. That is on steroids <laughs> when it comes to do, doing your financials because mm -hmm. every single thing, it makes a difference. Everything has to be recorded. Yeah. And you know that in itself is a task. It is, which yeah. is why I don't do it, yeah. <laughs> because it is a whole job, and yeah. people underestimate how significant, how much time it takes up, mm -hmm. but w sometimes some aspects of the story may be missing if you miss a recording or if you forget to include a particular invoice or receipt. Mm -hmm. You can imagine how upset a client would be if they paid you for services and you forgot to record it. And you're saying that they owe you and you send out an invoice. When That's messing with your relationships. Messing with relationships. So that reputational risk that we would have, that you would have reminded you of just now, mm -hmm. those kind of things have an impact. Okay. And you can also imagine if you had a tax filing that you were supposed to make and you mm -hmm. forgot to document that or you missed the deadline, which for businesses will be around March mm -hmm. because the personal income tax will be in April, but for companies, March is your deadline. If you miss that deadline, you start to incur fines and penalties. So this is why it's so important to make sure that your finances are on point because they can impact so many other things in your risk library. Right, okay, so you've got to get that right, all right. What are the other things that can end up in the risk library that we need to navigate against? Okay, so looking at the financials, there are mm -hmm. three statements that persons would usually have to make sure that they have mm -hmm. under control or understood. So the first one would be the income statement. And we'll start there because that one is pretty straightforward for most persons. Okay. The main thing you have to remember is that your income statement will look at all of the money you make okay. and all of the money that you spend. Okay. So, income statement. 
Yes. All the money you make and all of what you spend. So that's the in and the out. Exactly. Okay. So at the end, you will have what your net income is. And your revenue could include anything from, let's use our fish and chips example. Mm -hmm. You would have sold your food or, and your fish and chip packages. And mm -hmm. some person may want to get a little fancy and separate food from drinks because most people don't only sell food. Right. They may be selling drinks, so they might also even break it down further by having alcoholic versus non-alcoholic beverages right, right. so that they can get an idea of what's making money for them. If it's more the food side or if the drinks is what's really saving the business, what is it that helps you to be able to stay afloat? So it helps to compartmentalize. Correct. Okay. So you may realize that as much as your focus is on fish and chips, mm -hmm. your ribs or your chicken or whatever it is, is really what is the hot seller. Okay. When you start to categorize and put everything together. Mm -hmm. And then it's the same thing for the expenses. You have all your expenses listed, but again, you do a separation so that you can be able to pinpoint and zero in on which expenses are really pulling down your business. Mm -hmm. So you may be looking at something as simple as the cooking oil and realizing that you might have a cheaper version of oil that you may want to use, say, let's say vegetable oil is cheaper than corn oil, but then you realize it doesn't last as long or you have to change or it more often. Or, different. And people, so again, looking at all those trends which you have been talking about even from a personal side, mm -hmm. where you would track from month to month what your expenses look like, it's no different for a business but you want to be able to make sure that your expenses tell a story okay. and not just as to what is cheaper or what is saving you money, but what has an impact on your business doing well. Okay. All right. So we're going to see some more slides as we go through this. Remember this morning, we're looking at financial statements. Don't be intimidated by it. Just listen carefully and hear about um, what you need to know. So far, we've been focusing on knowing what is coming in, versus what is going out and looking to see what the cash cow really is within your business. Yes. Mm -hmm. What else? So the next set of financial statements that people usually have is something called a balance sheet. The balance sheet. Yes. And it's a little bit more technical than the income statement, but it paints another, a different story. It basically tells you what your financial position is mm -hmm. as at a particular period. This is what shows the profits? No, the income statement shows that the profits. Show, okay, right. But the, the balance sheet will show you what your assets and liabilities are. Okay. And what capital you have. And I'll break down all of those terms so that you can understand. Mm -hmm. So assets would be hopefully pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. You have things like cash. You have a building, probably. You may have a vehicle. You have equipment. You have inventory. And with regards to your assets, we usually split them into either current or long term. Mm -hmm. So the most current asset you would ever have would be your cash, either the cash you have on hand or the cash you have in your bank account. Mm -hmm. And we call that the most current one because we look at it in order of what you can easily convert into cash. And since okay. cash is already cash, that's the most current one you would have. Okay. But other assets most people might have would include persons owing you money. That's also an asset. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh because I am automatically remembering like old folks saying, you know, if you can't really afford to lose money, don't lend it, any because oh, it may not be coming back in. But that's one thing for a personal mm -hmm. um, experience. But when it comes to business, business, at some point, persons may owe you money. Okay. You may not have that for a fish and chip shop, right. but let's, look at courts or any of those okay. other companies at some point you may get to that level where your business is doing so well that you are able to extend a credit line okay and you may have 30 day terms 90 day terms or even longer mm -hmm. and you have to be able to track how often you will have persons bringing in money and how often you'll be extending credit 
But at the end of the day, it's an asset because at some point, it's money it's that's going in. to be coming back to you. Okay. All right, Crystal, we have to leave it there for now. How many other statements are we going to be looking at when we continue? Well, we have to finish the fin this balance sheet, and mm -hmm. then we're going to the cash flow. Excellent. I, everybody wants to hear about the cash flow, yes. Crystal. So thank you so very much for sharing with us on financial statements today. Mm -hmm. We are going to take a quick break. We've got a lot more to share with you on Morning Barbados.